prayer that we're praying, if we have not done this, God cannot hear that prayer. So as, as I said, my brother was talking about an imperfect human being, someone that is not yet born again, he's right. The man that is not yet born again, it's hard for him to forgive because his heart is carnal. The mind that he has is not the mind of Christ. But if you go to someone who has the mind of Christ, then that person is one with Christ. And whatever Christ would do, because remember, you know, he no longer lives. It is Christ that now lives in him. So Christ is the one that is working out his goodwill and his good pleasure in that individual, right? So long as Christ is in the heart, then forgiveness is not a, is not a, it's instantaneous. Long as, as a matter of fact, when I say Christ forgive you before you even ask, it's, that, it's as if it's fast than that. So uh, I'm just saying this, Bridget, if you cannot forgive, no matter what, right? And that is why we are so told that when somebody do something again against the Lord, you must not let the sun go down on your hunger. You understand? You must make sure things right because if the sun go down and you're still hungry and you have not forgiven, for, forgive, then that, that becomes sin. All right, Tom, just can I share something with the, with the group from the writing yes. of um, the prophet? Yes, yes, go ahead. I just want us to consider this. When we ask the Lord to forgive us, how quickly do we want this forgiveness? Do we want it to be a process or do we want it to be immediate? You know, when, when God forgives us, is it a process or is it immediate? You know, these are some of the questions we must ask ourselves because if we are going to be like Christ and having the mind of Christ, we have to look at it from the, the Jesus' perspective. When the thief on the cross was forgiven, was it a process or was it immediate? You know, these are some of the things we look at. But um, there's a book that was written in 2002, um, extracts from Ellen White's writing called The Prayer. I'm reading from page 115. It says, the prayer for forgiveness is always answered at once. So in some instances of healing, mm -hmm, yeah. Jesus did not at once grant, grant the blessing sought. But in the case of leprosy, no sooner has the appeal made than it, it was granted. When we pray for earthly blessings, the answer to our prayer may be delayed. Our God may give, may give us something other than we ask, but not so when we ask for deliverance from sin. He will to cleanse us from sin, to make us his children, and to enable us to live a holy life. Christ gave himself for our sins, that we, he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God, our Father. That is Galatians 1 and verse 4. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. First John 5, verses, first John 5, 14 and 15. If we confess our sins, the Bible says, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our, of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus don't want us to have any sin. The burden is what he wants to lift. As, as I had explained earlier, the, the, the root word for forgiveness, the Hebrew word is nasa, which is to lift up, to unburden. Why would we want to take the burden it, for, by, through a process? You know, the, the, the Bible, Jesus is saying that, take my yoke upon you and, on you and learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He wants to lift the burden from us the burden of sin, he's waiting to lift it. And we should be in that same kind of mindset as Jesus is, to wait to lift. We should, we should, we should have the attitude of forgiveness even before the sin is committed. Because even before the Lord created man, as Revelation says, Revelation chapter 13 says, he's a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He way before man was created. So God has already put in place a means to forgive us of our sins even before he created man upon the face of the earth. And I believe that as Christians, seek 
mind of Christ. We too must accept that kind of mindset. Amen. All right. Thank you. All right. So let me get a little into, into the presentation and then maybe some of the points will come up. All right. So, so um, one of the things that we, that we look at Um, my screen is gone. So, all right, here we are. So we look at um, what does the Bible say about forgiveness, all right? And the other part of the question is, let me tell you, what does the Bible say about forgiveness? What does it mean to forgive? So let's look at some of it. It said, can, can unforgivers be forgiven? That those who refuse to forgive betray the fact that they do not understand how much of their own sin they need to have forgiven. Christians should be willing to forgive people who have sinned against them. Every person has wronged God, has wronged God far more than they have been wronged by other people. And Jesus illustrates this point in Matthew 18, verse 21 to 35. So, so this point is saying that we should be willing to forgive others, willing. So as soon as when the, when the, the, the act is, is committed, um, we should be very willing to, to forgive them, all right? Because God, God has forgiven us far more than anybody can ever wrong us, all right? So I guess all of us can share that point and we, we believe that also about ourselves. Now, this is the, the, the story, a very interesting story that's taken from, from Matthew 18, 21 to 35. And I want us to look at it. So the story is there, so I'll just read it for you. It said, therefore, the kingdom of God, and listen, this is the kingdom of God. So we need to take note of it. What he's saying the kingdom of God is like. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like... Um, king who wanted to settle accounts with his servant. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. All right? At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. All right, so see what happened? He said, but when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. How much was he forgiven before? See that? He was, he, 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 he was forgiven um, hundreds of gold. No, this man had a hundred silver coins for him. He grabbed him. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell on his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant? Just Uh, okay, uh, can you hear me now? All right. So it says that um, 
Then the master of the servant, the master, I can't read. You wicked servant, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercies on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? In anger, his, masters, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. All right? So that is a lesson of unforgiveness that the Lord show us. And look at the forgiveness that he, that, that he gave to the person, even though he had owed him so much. He fell down at his feet. He asked him for forgiveness and he asked him for mercy. And immediately the servant was forgiven of his debt. Immediately he forgave his debt. All right. Now it is saying to us, it said that this is what the kingdom of God is like. All right. As our heavenly father forgives us, so also we have to, we have, are to forgive others. All right. Now, as they ask, we do. And as a matter of fact, they don't even have to ask. Because he said forgiveness, some, um, I think Brother Duke mentioned it, and Brother Taylor, that before we ask for forgiveness, forgiveness was there already. It is a gift from God for us to take. He said God gives us the ability to forgive others. It is, an, it is an ability that each of us has. All right? Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgive, forgave you. Ephesians 4, verse 32. In the Bible, the Greek word translated forgiveness literally means to let go. All right? That's the Greek word. I think Brother Duke mentioned the Hebrew word that is to lift up. All right? So it's the same line of reasoning. As when a person does not demand payment for a debt, Jesus used this comparison when he taught his followers to pray. Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is in debt to us. All right? So therefore, if we look and we, we don't forgive anybody, we don't forgive those who hurt us. We are waiting for a time because, it, you know, we, it's a process that we have to go through. So, you know, I'm thinking about it. I have not yet forgiven them, all right? So, so, so we have not yet forgiven them. Oh, then when we kneel down in the evening, we are going to ask the Lord to forgive our sins, all right? He said, forgive us as we forgive them. How did we forgive them? Did we instantaneously give them pardon as they ask? Or they, or they have to wait until, you know, when we feel better, let it, let it wear off first. All right? So that is what the kingdom of heaven is like. Biblical definition. The Bible never really gives us a, a, a definition of what is forgiveness. But it shows us many examples of it. All right? So even though the Bible didn't say forgiveness is this, like it said, hope is this, or faith is that, it didn't say. But better than saying it, it the Bible shows us. The greatest of all example is the forgiveness of God. Although, although the following passage does not use the word forgive, in, in, it describes the concept of God's forgiveness perfectly. All right? If you have um, a point you want to make, you can just raise your hand. In Psalms 103, verse 18. Then? 8 to 12. Then. Don't let me talk to you. All right, you're able to hear me. Um, everybody remember to mute your mics because we can hear you when you talk. All right. It said the Lord, no, look at it. This is a description of, of forgiveness. So even though there's not a, a, a word, a definition, there's a description. It said the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. 
he will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sin deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgression from us. So here's a beautiful definition of what it means to forgive. Now look at the, 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 the characteristic of the forgiver. Look at the characteristic. Look at, at, at um, the attribute that this person has. He's compassionate, he's gracious, he's slow to anger, he's abounding in love. He doesn't always accuse the person of the wrong that he does, and he doesn't hold his anger against anybody for a long time. He does not treat us as a sin deserve, and he does not repay the person based on oh, what the wrong that the person has done. All right? No, no, those are character of God that the children, I heard Brother Randall had mentioned that we have to move, and I think Brother Tina mentioned it also, we have to move to the position where the word of God has become true to us because it said, the Bible said we have to live by every word and the word of God. So let this mind be in us, right? The mind of Christ has to be in us. When the mind of Christ is in us, this description that we are getting right here, the compassion and the care and the slow to anger and the love, all right? No, not an accuser, not, not harboring any anger. Don't treat persons as they sin deserve to be with. Not, not repaying someone because of what they, you, you think they deserve. That Those are, are the character of Christ, right? And these characters would have been in us, right? So he said, as far as the heaven is from the earth, so has he removed our transgression from us. So when somebody does us something, do we forgive them in such a way that we remove, remove it from us completely? All right? Uh, Brother Duke had mentioned Joseph forgiveness. Here it is, Genesis 50, verse 7. All right, he said what? I ask you to forgive your brother, their brothers the sins and the wrong they committed in treating you so badly. No, please forgive the sins of the servants of the of the God of your father. All right? So that is one example of, of someone asking for forgiveness. And this was, was Jacob telling uh, Joseph to forgive his brother. All right? Even though Joseph had already forgiven them. But no, please forgive their sin. All right? Exodus 4 verse 30. In this way, the, pre pre the priests make amendment for those who had sinned by the, the sacrifices that were made. As soon as someone knows that they are sin, they, may, they bring the sacrifice and immediately, as soon as it goes, and they made a confession, confession, the sin is forgiven. All right? So in the Bible, we see the, 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 the essence of forgiveness being not something that we harbor in our, in our heart. We can't have the anger against anybody and go sleep with it. But it is something that as soon as we recognize something, somebody has done or something, the main thing we do is run to Christ. Run to Christ with it so that your heart can be free immediately. All right? He said, for a person to find true forgiveness, he or she must admit the sin. This is called confession. If a person tries to pass off sin as a mere mistake. Do you know that nowadays a person don't even call um, sin, sin? We call it mistake. Everybody else, sometimes we make mistakes, sometimes we sin. They call it sin, and that's what it is. So if we try to pass it off as, as sin as mere mistake, human failing, our, our temporary lapse of judgment, or if her, he or she simply denies the sin altogether, it is a barrier of forgiveness. All right? If we claim to be without sin, that is 1 John 88 to 10. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. All right? So the, the, 
Example is given by our relationship with God. Right? If we cannot know the forgiveness of God, it is hard for us to forgive another person who has done us wrong. All right? This is God's covenant. He said, this is the covenant I will make with them after that time, said the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he had, he had this after he said that. He said what? Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. That is forgiveness. And where these have been forgiven, and where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. All right? So once a person is forgiven, the person must be completely forgiven. All right? Let me take some. Let me take some. Is this reason or chat? All right. Cancel the time. All right, so let me. All right, so Jesus is our substitute. He said, in order for God to forgive us, Jesus gave himself as a sacrifice for sin. Jesus alluded to that sacrifice at the last supper when he told his disciples, this is my blood of the covenant. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. So you see what happened? Even, even before we ask for uh, forgiveness of the sin, Christ had gone ahead and he had already put things in place for, for forgiveness of sin. That's why when he, was, when he was being crucified, he asked for even before the sinner asked for the forgiveness he said father forgive them he asked forgiveness before this sinner so sometimes persons do us wrong and even before the person come and acknowledge that they do us wrong in our hearts because we are children of god we should know so sometimes i hear a person say and in that you know to say sorry yeah and beat and in that you know say sorry that is no basis for you not to forgive the person whether or not they say sorry the, the sorry is not for the person so much. Uh, it's not for you so much, but for the person. For that person burden to be lifted. For you, you must know that Christ had forgiven you. So therefore, we must forgive. He said, after the resurrection, the apostles carried the message of forgiveness through Jesus Christ throughout the world, preaching to both Jews and Gentiles. <laughs> Forgive, um, do as the Lord does. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Right? That is Colossians, Colossians 3, verse 13. In fact, those who refuse to forgive betray the fact that they do not understand how much of their own sin they are forgiven. Christians should be willing to forgive people who have sinned against them. Have every person that have wronged God for more than they far more than they were wrong by others. I think I read, read that before. We often hear the phrase, and this is something I want us to look at. Forgive and forget. All right? This phrase I said, forgive and forget. And some, some other says, I will forgive, but I will never for, for, forget. No, so the question, let's, uh, let's work that one out. Let's talk about that. Which is correct? Should we say, Forgive and forget, or forgive, but I can't forget. Which is the correct one? Let's talk. All right, let me hear. Kosha, you're, ta you're talking? No, no, no. My phone is giving me a problem. Sorry about that. Okay. All right, um, let me hear some comments. Should we forgive and forget, or should we forgive, but we won't be able to forget? All right, go, Sister Redway. Uh, Sister Redway. Um, you can, you're, not, you're not hearing Sister Redway. Um, let me unmute. Um, can you unmute Sister Redway, please? Uh, 
Um, unmute sister Redway so that we can. Um, okay. Can Are you hearing me now? I'm hearing you now. Yes, go ahead. Okay. One does not forget an experience. The choice of forgetting, the choice of forgiveness from a heart that is dwelt in by the Holy Spirit. When you, when the, 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 when the remembrance of what was done to you comes up, there is no bitterness, there is no hatred, and you just praise the Lord that you have gotten past whatever, and you have forgiven the person. It's just like a scar on your hand. You know that it hurt bad, badly when you got the cut, but it has healed, so it hurts no longer, even though the scar is there. Okay, thank you. I'm Brother Taylor. Um, yes, um, remember what God said, you know. He said when we repent, when we genuinely repent, if not, in, not just only forgive us, he cleanses us, he purges us. And next thing that he does is that he, he throws our sin to the bottom of the sea. And him, God, will remember it no more. So in order for God not to remember our sin, there must be some miracle or something like that that God did that him don't remember our sin any at all, right? Now, if God don't remember our sin, but yet still, this is still coming at us. It, it has become a, a temptation. It would not be coming from God. It simply means then that it will be coming from the enemy, Satan, trying to, to put on some guilt thing that we believe that God forgive, but he does not forget. I am both don't forgive and don't forget. But God tells us that when he forgives us, him, God, will remember our sin no more. So as, as if God don't remember our sin anymore, then he will not bring it back to us. So if it come back to us, it will be coming from the enemy himself. Okay. All Can right. I, um, hello? Uh, I just want to say that um, remember, remember that memory you can choose to remember, and yet you can choose to not remember, but fleeting thoughts come to you. We're, we're talking about dealing with each other. Yeah. God, God, does not, God does not forget, but he chooses to forget. So mm. it's, a, it's a choice. When it comes, when the thought comes, you don't entertain the thought. Because no. somebody might do somebody else something exactly like what was done to you. And the thought comes, but well, because you are forgiven the person, you don't have you don't hold any grudge. It would be inhuman to say you don't remember what was done. Right? Yeah. But you yeah. choose to lay it aside because you have dealt with it and God has helped you to move on. So All you right. forgive, but you may not necessarily forget. Yeah? The forgetting can be willing and it can be unwilling. All right. Because thank you. memory plays a part. All right. Okay, thank you. Um brother brother Layton. Yes. Um for instance at work, somebody have done me wrong clearly um set out to do something wrong and the person continues to do do it whenever he gets the opportunity how do you treat that all right so, she, so he's asking um he's asking um somebody continually try to hurt you at work deliberately seek out to do your to do your wrong um how do you treat that Let's be, let's get let's get some let's get some answers. All right, go go for the team. Um, well, one of the first thing the Lord said to us when the question was asked, "Oh, often we should forgive." He said, "What? Seventy times seven, right?" Um, and next thing again, if we look how often we have sinned against God, 
sometime for one day. You know, I remember once I was at Ten City at my church and I was presenting something. And this brother said to me, then it simply mean that if that is the case, if this is what the Bible is teaching, it simply mean that we should not be sinning then. Didn't say anything to him, but he went to work apart the following day, decided in his heart that he will not sin. He came back to me the Sabbath. He said, Brother Taylor, as long as you are presenting, I don't want to be anywhere at all where you are. He said, I said, why? He said, the other day when you present, showing us that we should live like Christ and shouldn't sin. I went out to work and I tried my best not to sin. And he said he had never sinned so much in all his life. <laughs> he has never sinned so much in all his life. No. For the first time, he was just checking off his sin. Otherwise, from that, he was just going along. So I'm saying to you that if God said that he, forg he forgives and he forgets, and as long as we ask genuinely, this is what he'll do, right? From God said that, you see, love, you see, love, it's all about love. Because sometimes you have um, some spouse, the love that they have for their spouse is so much that while the spouse is even hurting them, you understand? It's like they can't see what that spouse is doing to them. The only thing they want is to come back to become one again. I don't know if you see, we call them fool. We call them idiot. You understand? But this is a similar way that God is chasing us. He is, no matter how we, we, we try to, to, to commit adultery by, by uh, our God whoring of our other gods, he's still coming back. You understand? Still looking at not who we are, but who we can become. So I'm just saying that love make a difference. You have children that has done seriously wrong where parent is concerned. And the, the love makes a difference that just to become one again, you don't even remember. You don't even remember what that child do. The, 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 the change that, it was, that is in that person was so powerful that all you can do is, is praising God. Yes, the enemy, as I said, is, he always wanted to play the guilt trip, to, 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 to bring up back what God has forgiven and forget or what you have forgiven and forget. But you know that that don't come from God. It comes from Satan. Right? So as long as it comes in, rebuke it and ask God to, to fill it with his spirit, with his mind, that you can continue to do what is right. Okay. I have two hands. Let me mention this before I take these two hands. Um, one of the things, Brother, brother Layton, that I, as I am studying the word of God, the, more, the deeper I get into the word of God, the more some, some things are coming up to me. I recognize there are many enemies that come against the children of God. Many enemies come seeking to destroy the children of God. But guess what? If the children of God, during the time when they are re when they really Israel, because you know Judah is a, they, they tend to sometimes serve sometimes depend on the king that they are that, that is ruling at the time will determine the, the, the response to, to, to the threat that is there, that is coming to them. If there are those that are serving God, when you look at um, Jehoshaphat, when you look at, look at Josiah, when you look at Ezekiah, when you look at David, when you look at those, those who come upon them, you will find out that what they do, they don't look at the person who is trying to hurt them. You know, what they do is turn to God. So they don't see, it's not the enemy they see, it's just the might of God. Right? So always there will be those who are trying to put us down, hurt us, you know, do us harm, all those kind of things. But remember, there's an enemy of soul that seeks to destroy at all times. So don't look at the person because that person is a candidate for heaven. So therefore, what we do is look to the Lord. You pray as if you have never prayed before and you pray with a clean heart. Say, Lord, this is your child. You died for him. He needs to be saved. How can I present the gospel so that he can be saved? So you present Christ. Always seek to please God. The Bible said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Everything else will be added. That, that includes your peace. Right? Because remember that many things will happen to us in this time. The response must always be Christ-like. All right? So let me take um, Brother Duke and then Brother Randall. All right, I just, uh, one of the things I really want to add to the conversation is the whole matter of restoration. 
Because the question was asked, what if somebody keeps doing the same thing over and again and again? I guess the answer came before when the, and it was referred to by, by Sister Lamley, where Jesus said, you know, how many times, when the question was asked of Jesus, how many times should you forgive? Seven times? And Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. The, the thing about it, you as the individual must be willing to forgive. Restoration comes when the other person acknowledges their wrong, confess their wrong, and is willing to step away from the wrong. That's the only time you can reconcile with the person. But if a person keeps doing the same thing while you are still willing to forgive, that person is not willing to reconcile themselves to you. So what should you do? You should maintain your willingness to forgive. But at the same time, you have to be wise. If this person is going to be hurting you, you need to take the necessary action to protect yourself. Not that you're going to go against the person to try and hurt back the person. But you, the willingness to forgive must always be there. Now, the reason for, for this is because that's the way our relationship is with God. God is always willing to forgive us. But if we are not willing to reconcile ourselves to God by confessing our sins, and to step away, it's called repentance. Repent from what we're doing. There can be no reconciliation. And it is not God that leaves us. It is us that leave God. And in, in our case, it's not the person. It's not we who cast the person off. It's the person cast him or herself off. But the willing, if the person is willing to confess and to repent from what they're doing, then you must be willing to reconcile that relationship. With that individual as well. Amen. All right, Brother Randall, are right there? Yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, you know, I think there's a reason why the Bible did not give a specific definition of, of, of forgiveness, you know. Mm. Um I want to bring to our attention that perfection becoming perfect is a matter that happens over time and i go back to the word process because we know that not one of us becomes perfect overnight we go to our hills and our valleys and our trials and each one of them builds us stronger now forgiveness is a, is a, is a super sublime topic and i believe that we have to understand that true forgiveness can only take place as man becomes one with God. Until yeah. that happens, none of us will be able to instantly forgive. None of us will be able to forget. And we have to be careful about the forgive, forgive and forget thing. Because mm. my understanding, and I, I, I stand to be corrected, that whereas the Lord forgives us, when we ask for that forgiveness and we genuinely repent, if in fact we are lost, if in fact we are ultimately lost, we pay for those sins. How yeah. do you therefore define that in the case of forgetting? So there are a number of sublime issues that are tied up with the whole, whole matter of forgiveness. And I believe that what we, we really have to focus on, we really can't solve them, you know. We can't solve them because there are too many subtleties and, and things. But I think what we need to focus on is to recognize that man cannot truly learn to forgive except he becomes like God. And until that happens, until mm -hmm. that happens, we are going to keep remembering. We are, going to, we are going to keep being affected by the things that have happened to us, right? And as the brother said, you really cannot be foolish if you know that someone means you harm, then you need to be on guard. You, you cannot forget if you're going to be on guard. So there are too many things that are tied up on it. I just believe that for us to really, really appreciate, understand, and implement this in our lives, it is a process of being subjected totally to the will and might of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Thank you very much. All right, let me, let me read this and then we can take on some more. It said, forgive and forget. We often hear the phrase, forgive and forget. And this can be misleading. As a rejoinder to this phrase,
sometimes we hear, I'll forgive, but I will never forget. To forgive and forget does not mean that the person who has been wrong develops some kind of sanctified amnesia. A person who has been abused will never forget that it had happened. A person who has suffered from an adulterous cause will always remember that experience. A parent who has had a child abducted will probably think about that crime every day he or she spends on earth. Yet it is possible for each of these people who have been sinned against to forgive and also to forget as long as the biblical definition of forget is in view. So let's look a little at what we are talking about here. All right? He said, in the Bible, remembering and forgetting do not have to do with retention of information in the brain. In Genesis 8, verse 1, after the flood, God remembered Noah. Does this imply that for a while God had forgotten about Noah, misplaced him among the flood waters, and then one day he remembered and thought he had better check on him? No. The biblical concept of remembering has to do with choosing to act. And forgetting means refusing to act on the basis of something. When the Bible said God remembered Noah, it means that God chose to act on Noah's behalf and sent a wind to help the waters recede more rapidly. God promised that under the new covenant, I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. All right? So that is Jeremiah 31, verse 34. All right? And we look at Hebrews 8, verse 12. So it's, it's, not, it's not saying that um, he won't ever, as, as you have mentioned, Brother Randall, it, there's a record of what we have done in a book. It is there. Where, 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 what the forgiveness has done, where God has put it, is that it is not counted to us at all as if we have ever sinned. Once we are forgiven, it is what we are white, clean, clean, as if we have never done anything. All right? But that is from our lives. But there's a book of record that if, as you mentioned, something we did not surrender ourselves to God and we are lost, then all of those will be back there on the books. Our sins will be there. They will be accounted to us again. All right? He said, God does not forget that people have sinned, but when he forgives, he chooses not to act on the basis of, of those sins. It is similar to the sentiment expressed in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5, where love keeps no record of wrongs. All right, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5. In the phrase, forgive and forget, the two terms are really synonymous. Both mean that the person who was forgiven will not continue to hold that sin against the wrongdoer or take it into account in future interactions. A person may remember that it happened, but he or she can choose not to act on it. That is biblical forgiving. All right? So let me tell you an ethical story that I can tell you. Um, I remember when we were young children, um, I used to love baking pudding. Potato pudding was my thing because my mother planned potato and um, I'm always in the baking mode. So I baked this nice, put on this nice potato pudding on the, on the cold stove outside with my hallelujah, what, what you again? Um, Ella bottom, Ella top, and hallelujah in the middle. You know that kind of fire thing. And I baked this pudding to perfection. I look at it, that nice little thing on the top was set. And um, giving it just a little time to, you know, get that little color right there. So when it was time, I went out, opened the pot, um, take off the pot cover, to, the, the, the zinc, you know, that we used to cover it. When I took it off, the pot was empty. I mean, literally empty. It, it, it was so clean. There was not even a little crumbs left in it. Literally clean. And it was covered back on the store. When I looked, my older brother, the one that I follow, he was standing down the verse and he was there laughing. Would you believe that that boy stole my pudding? Took all of it. All of it. I don't know if they were doing some truth or deer or something. I don't know what happened. But the boy took away the whole of the pudding. He didn't even cut off and leave. Bad no. 
of course, you know I was mad. Oh, I was mad. I ball like I saw balling like I swear that I'm going to do it. Oh, I'm going to hurt him. Mama, I'm going to do something to your son. I and I was balling and going out. And I decided I'm going to do him bad, bad things. Ah, bad, bad things I'm going to do. <laughs> My body was gone. I didn't even taste the slime. So um he didn't come back in the, in the in the yard for about like three days. He didn't sleep at home. He's a boy, and we were, we were teenagers, I think. Yeah, somewhere there. No, you see why I can't remember the story now? Because guess what? You know that I've forgiven him, right? So I can't even remember the story straight. So I can't even tell what age we were. I know it is one of the most amusing stories I've, I've heard. But at that time, forgiveness, forgiveness. Oh, man, I wanted to hurt that boy. So for three days, <laughs> he, he, he hid himself. And then when he came back, by then, I, I, I'm not the one to hold grudges. So by that time, he I mean, come back. And he knows that I, was, I wouldn't be able to hold on to it. So by the time he came back, I was all right again. And I can't even, I can't even do anything about it again. You understand? But I can remember the story now. But if I'd caught him at that moment, oh, that would break every bone that he has. You understand? I would have done him things and things because he did that to me. Right? Everybody has heard that on me. So when I tell this story now, there is no, there's no feeling of, um, of animosity. There's no feeling of anything. It's just amusing um, to think of what he did. You understand? So this is it. He said a person may remember that it happened, but he or, should, or she can choose not to act on it. All right? So even though it had happened to us and all of that, when I tell the story, as a matter of fact, person tend to feel sorry for me more than I feel sorry for myself. All right? He said, in some cases, the one who has been sinned against is right to simply let it go, even if forgiveness has not been requested. My brother has never... As a matter of fact, even though I think he found it the most amusing thing he has ever done. He has never asked forgiveness. He has never expressed that he was sorry. And I don't even know if he was sorry because it never came up again. Right? Never came up that, you know, he never said anything about it. It was just so amusing. And when him talk, him just talk about it and laugh. He said, oh, you understand? But guess what? Even if forgiveness has not been requested, and in other cases, the one sin against needs to wait until the offending party has confessed and asked for forgiveness so that the relationship can be restored. Don't wait until persons ask you for forgiveness for you to forgive them. Forgive them because the love of God is in your heart. All right? This is a principle behind church discipline. You know, in church discipline, sometimes it is hard um, when, you know, sometimes persons something happened and then they have to um, discipline the person in church. It's not that it's not forgiven, but sometimes because the person not, didn't own up to the thing, it means that there are no changes that taken place and therefore discipline has to be taken. If the confrontation of the sinner brings about confession, then reconciliation and forgiveness are offered. If the confrontation is unsuccessful, excommunication and we don't really use that word i just want to find a better word but you know sometimes persons that things that are taken place then you know unfortunately they have to be um they are removed from church activities all right he said talk about it as a general rule regarding petty slights and offenses in the family the fa in the family and in the church, a person should let them go. Turn the other cheek, as Jesus put it. However, if the offense is such that turning the other cheek is not possible, the offended party is obligated to go to talk to the offender about it. This is an habit that we need to develop. Under no circumstances does anyone have the right to harbor resentment nurture bitterness or gossip about the offense. You do not have that right. It does not matter what anybody has ever done to you. You know, one of the worst things that we do as Christians, very, very terrible. Sometime in our discussion, we talk about that. You, I did you something, all right? And you know I did you something. You did not come to me and talk to me about it. 
Another person who don't know me at all, don't know anything about me, right? But might know you, right? You go and you tell the person about um, what a thief I am, what a murderer I am, or something. No, automatically, without knowing both sides of the story, that person can develop a, 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 a picture about that person without knowing the person. And it's because of our slander. So we are not just slander someone, but if, if something has happened, then under no circumstances do we have the right to resent and to have any, um, harbor any resentment, nurture any bitterness or gossip about the offense against the person who has done us things. If we do that, we have to know that we will not be forgiven of the Lord. The Lord is expecting us to be Israel and that. That's why he said, you know, if thy brother offend thee, right? Then you are to leave your gift. I think Brother Taylor had mentioned that. Leave your gift at the altar and go and make it right with the person. And you see what he said? If, if the person's offended by us, it's not us offended, being offended, you know, you're children of God. You are children of God. So it's not expecting that we are going to have any resentment against anybody. So persons will have it against us and we might know about it. But as children of God, we are not in a position to have any resentment against anybody. All right? Let me do Brother Do before I move on. Go, Brother Do. I, I just want to add, sis, the passage of scripture that says, Great peace of they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. That beautiful. I, um, I know our uh, church sister would tell me that's not realistic. It's saying it's not realistic that nothing can offend you. The person will do things and you'll be offended. All right? But the Bible tells us something. The Bible says we have to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So when somebody does something and I'm, and I'm offended, I recognize it's because my heart has not been sold out to Christ. When persons offend me, it means, therefore, that the mind of Christ is not in me. All right? So therefore, I am not so much concerned about the, the person. I am fearful about my soul salvation and it sent me running to the Lord to say, listen, my mind is not sold out on Christ. I've not given my heart to the Lord. Therefore, I'm taking offense. Great peace of they that love thy law. Nothing shall offend them. Yes, Sister Ruby. Uh, unmute Sister Ruby so that she can come. Are you hearing me now? Yes, I can hear. Go ahead. Jesus also says, offense will come, but woe to him that causes it. So mm. it's how the, oh, you handle the offense that comes to you, right? The nothing that can, does not offend you is that because you are walking in the way of the Lord. You do not let it become a burden, but offense will come to you. Yeah. All right. Okay. But remember the Bible said nothing shall offend them. So offense, offense in this sense is saying that things will come upon us. Persons will try to hurt us. Person will try to do things to us. But woe be unto them. If we are children of God and they try to hurt us, woe be unto them. So that is the offense that for me said, but nothing shall offend them. That means that we will not get resentful and bitter and angry by what persons do to us. Because a person can do you things you know, and it's no sin to you or say things about it. That's not sin. You know what is sin? Your response. As you mentioned, it is our response to what persons do to us that will determine whether or not we are sinning. All right. Okay, so remember this part. It said, under no second does one have the right to harbor resentment, nurture bitterness, and gossip about an offense. All right. It should never come in our heart to, to, to be angry and talk and fix some quarrel and going on about an offense that someone did to us. All right. It said, here are some questions to ponder in relation 
to forgiveness. Have I confessed my sins and received God's forgiveness? This is something that we need to know for ourselves. Is there anyone who are, whom I have sinned against and whom I need to ask forgiveness? Is there anyone who has sinned against me and has asked me for forgiveness, but I have refused to forgive? Is there anyone I'm holding a grudge against for past wrong? Is there anyone? If there is an unresolved issue, will I simply let it go or will I go talk to the offender about it? Continuing to hold a grudge is not a biblical option. All right. Would I be willing to forgive if the offender asked me for forgiveness? And the last question, which I didn't write there, but it's very important. Will I be willing to forgive if the offender did not ask me for forgiveness? These are questions. So you can, I'm leaving that right there so you can take a picture of these questions because these are the things that are sometimes. And, and we cannot trivialize it sometimes. Many terrible acts of injustice have been done against persons. When a mother can see your see their child brutally murdered, when 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 um when so a drunken driver beat down somewhere meet uh, meet in an accident and kill the other family, many kind of injustice, terrible thing. When you look at um George Floyd the other day, right? Even that can bring up some anger or something. But the anger that is that is brought up in a human heart sometimes cannot doesn't necessarily have to be out of a grudge. It can be just out of indignation because of, of um cruelty to mm -hmm. others that don't really have anything to do with you. Right? That's not a grudge. And, but these are the questions that we need to ponder. And to these questions, you can add that one that I just asked. Would I be willing to forgive if the offender did not ask me for forgiveness? All right? So these are the, these are the part that we have to ponder. Forgiveness is a two-way street. It has mm -hmm. our relationship with God as we look at, at our relation, how much we need. We desperately need our forgiveness from our God. Every day, every minute we ask, every prayer we ask forgiveness of God. All right? And we desperately are is in need of it. Right? On the other hand, others who we think have offended us or our cause offense and, and they know that they have done wrong and they ask, for, are we willing? How much time are, are we willing to forgive persons? What is the willingness of, 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 of us? Are we at a place where we want to reach where the Bible says, great peace of they that love them and nothing shall offend them? Are, are we striving for that, for Christ in the mind, where we will not be offended by others? We have to be like Jesus. Jesus was not offended by people. They can call him when Biba, they can spit in his face, they can slap him, they can do whatever. He's not offended. He was not offended by anything that was done to him. All right? The only offense that, 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 um, that, that he reacted to was when they desecrated the house of his father. So it was not him, but his father's rage that, that, that was there because of the, the, that offense. So God wants us to have a heart that is full of love and compassion, a heart that mirrors Christianity, a heart that will re re resound with wanting to be oneness with God and with each other. And I pray that this evening is where it starts. Those persons who we thought that had said or done something that really hurt us, let us ask God to forgive us for taking offense and ask him to forgive those persons and ask him to help us that we will be forgiven to those persons. Not because they ask, but because we need the forgiveness of Christ. So in the last verse, and forgive us our debts as we forgive those that are that, that trust us against us. All right? So we want God to forgive us. Let us also remember to forgive others. May God bless us all in Jesus' name. 
Any, any comments we are closing now? Let me hear some participation, some comments before we close out. Yeah, Brother Layton, go ahead. Yes. Um, I am a living testimony that an unforgiving spirit will literally destroy you. Yes. You were drifting before, when, while you're there. Um, and then this thing come up for you to forgive somebody. It's like a whirlwind pick you up and I want to blow you up far away from God. Mm. So um, when when it 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 was difficult for me to to forgive because um, and the person felt the same way because the person felt that they was a victim because of what I did and I feel like I'm a victim. But um, when you truly forgive, you know you don't um, really matter if the person forgives you. Mm -hmm. It, it's mm -hmm. not. It, it's not to say that it don't really matter, it, but it's not a. Um, it's not a requisite. Yes, for you, for you to forgive. forgive. Yeah. And honestly, it's done you more good when you forgive. When you truly forgive a person, and you, in fact, when you forgive the person, and you go to the person to let them know that you have forgiven them. Yes. And, um. You you're still getting resentment. You, yeah. And you still try and then the person push you away and you you say, okay, listen, all right, I have forgiven you. And not to continue bombarding you, but I will, but I will not stop praying for you. Yes. You know, and that is sincere. Right? And one thing that I've learned tonight, one of the thing that the point that I'm taking away is what forgetness. For, forget me yeah. um yeah. because i was of the notion that you should it's like you should you should be you're trying to block it out but if you are mm -hmm. hurt just like the scars that jesus will be keeping for us because of sin in his hand yeah. he will be the and we all will have the have the scar a scar yeah. don't scar don't go away but you can choose not to act so that yeah. is my, that's the main thing I'm taking away from this discussion tonight. Amen. Amen. Yes. Who was the other person? And then, when let's talk, was it, was, was, was the presentation meaningful for you? Anything it will help with? Raise your hand. Our sister Redway. 